Lee Wayne Hughes, Spendthrift Farm in the US has a great history and they've expanded their operations in Victoria, welcoming a new son of Medallia Doro, Bolt Doro, for the new season. fantastic to be here at Spendthrift Australia in Victoria. I mean it's obviously very green and you've had plenty of rain but you've put so much into this farm as well. The way you've restructured the, the fencing, the buildings, the beautiful old wood panels in the stables. I mean it's it's a fantastic looking property. Yeah I think you, last time you were here we've only been here about three months so um, I'm glad you've noticed the changes because there's been plenty since then. And a huge investment by B. Wayne Hughes. I mean we know Spendthrift in America is just a fantastic operation but it's really important I guess for Victoria and for so many people that are working here and people that are sending mares to your stallions. Yeah, I think it is. It's something that Mr Hughes wanted to do because we think that it's a, a market that suits Spendthrift. Um, the, the model behind Spendthrift is that the breeder comes first. So to come down here and give the breeders an opportunity to, to utilise our programs and, and stallion lineups that we've put together I think it, yeah, it's it's a great investment for the state and a big part of that is the sons of champion sires I mean that's a big spendthrift philosophy isn't it and your new boy this year Bolt Doro is exactly that being by the sire of stars of their generations Rachel Alexandra Vancouver and many many more all of our stallions on our roster are by champion stallions there's not too many farms that can say that and, and we're proud of the group that we've put together an impressive debut by Bolt Doro. There's not too many horses that shuttle that have an Australian profile like this horse. Um, by a stallion that's been successful here, the only multiple group one winning two-year-old to shuttle to Australia in the last 10 years. Um, and he's the only multiple group one winning two-year-old by his side, Medallia Doro. So um, obviously we're dealing with a high-class athlete. He's just a lovely rangy horse, isn't he? I mean, he really, there's some parts of him that are so much like Vancouver to my eye. You know, he's got a lovely length about him, but so much power and, and you know, beautiful mover and just just all the muscles in the right places yeah we definitely weren't disappointed when he came off the truck uh, from quarantine and um, the breeders have been very happy with the horse that's walked out in front of them at our parades and and at parades that we've organized for our clients to come out and see him so we've had a great response to him so far he won the Delmar Futurity, the front runner stakes at Santa Anita. He was third to Good Magic in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. So this is some of the best two-year-old form in the world. It, it's a two-year-old form that uh, we don't often see shuttle to Australia. So um, we're very happy to, to have him here and uh, we look forward to supporting him with some of our own men. And of course he's got the great fertility and really good numbers in the first season in the US too. 200 mares at 94% fertility. He's, uh, he obviously knows how to do his job and he does it well. So it's, it's great for us to to know that we've got that coming down here. Overshare in front. Uh, he's a horse that's close to my heart. We purchased him as a yearling um, at the Easter sale. He's the most expensive uh, I'm Invincible colt at that sale. Um, he's obviously raced in our colours and, and was lucky enough to pick up a few stakes races there as a three-year-old. But I think the thing people forget was that he was fourth in the Blue Diamond preview on debut and then ran fifth in the prelude um, in his next start. So he's got the two-year-old performance, but then he backed it up at three with the two stakes wins. Just a gorgeous gorgeous horse himself. I mean, I am Invincible has that quality head and, and you know, going back through Invincible spirit, his sire and this, this fellow has exactly the best attributes you'd want to see physically in a son of I am Invincible. Yeah, they're quite a good comparison. I think if you stood them next to each other, I'd, uh, we'd, it'd, I'd enjoy to pick, pick the two of them <laughs> apart. And I think that we'd come up with uh, a lot of similarities. The Zedative was run, won by uh, a horse, Not A Single Doubt, who most people would know. It was the best race that Not A Single Doubt run, won and it was the best race that Overshare won. He's obviously from a pedigree of five champion racehorses inside his first three generations. But the interesting thing is that there's been three horses uh, win black type in Australia from his family and, and that's been below 1400 metres. So um, an, an international family that gets uh, all distances, but uh, it's, it's quite interesting to see that the cross is working well here at, at the shorter distances in Australia. And gold standard, incredibly, he's the only son of the late Sebring in Victoria. He beat the likes of Trapeze Artist, a side the Mission. They were all Group 1 winners in the Stan Fox. But isn't he like his sire too, Sebring? And we know what a versatile stallion he was. Yeah, it was a mirror, mirror on the wall uh, <laughs> type thing when we saw him for the first time. He's definitely uh, the dead spit of his dad. And, um, you yeah, know, we're very happy to have the horse on the roster. 
And Jimmy Creed, 75% winners to runners, a lot better at the same stage than some of the best American sires who've come to Australia. You have horses like More Than Ready, Street Cry, Medallia, Doro there, the horses that you put on um, on record at the moment as the best modern day shuttlers. And, and at the same time, this horse is shooting at anywhere from 7% uh, to 25% better um, winners to runners ratio than those horses at the same time in their career. So um, to have a horse like Jimmy here doing what he's doing in the Northern Hemisphere, I think it only adds that extra bit of flavour to, to him and, and the success that we're hoping that he'll have down here. And it's not just the investment by Spendthrift here in Australia with the farm and, and what you're doing here, but also, you know, contributing to the, the yearling market in Australia, spending over $5 million at yearling sales the last few years, including a fabulous $1.7 million deep impact goal to Easter. Unfortunately, we lost deep impact, but hopefully we've uh, bought one at the right time. He's obviously a lovely cult from a, a wonderful Woodlands female family uh, bred by Arrowfield. It's our way of getting colts into the stable and and, and we're trying to do things the hard way like most farms and we're trying to buy the colt as a yearling and end up with him on our roster and we've done well we've got two on the roster so far in the short space of time that we've been here and and hopefully we can find one or two more in the years to come everybody uh, comes to work with a smile on their face and and we all work together to, to put together what mr hughes wants and um, let's hope that we can make him proud